<laughs> now that's just hilarious. So there's three things I need to do with this car. No, not sell it. I'm going to keep it forever, which means I'm going to live forever. So that's not true, because how many six foot seven, 80 year olds do you see walking around? None. They don't make it. I'm not going to make it. Bugger. So I am mortal, but I am going to keep this car for as long as I'm around. The three things that I need for this car to be, yeah, I need the steering. So I keep getting distracted. There's a horse looking at me and I don't trust it. I don't trust that horse or any horse that doesn't have the word power. So yeah, so steering, engine, and sound system of some description. The steering is the old steering box and it's actually the camber of the road or bumps, uh, depressions, deviations on the surface that will control which direction this car's going in. And I've got several inches of play before I can actually grab control of the, of the car. Several inches of play is probably going to be the name of my sex tape, but who would make a tape when you've got the cloud? So to combat the, all this play in the 41 year old steering box, I'm actually, uh, it's a pretty big investment, but I'm gonna go for a rack and pinion system. It's going to be an RRS rack and pinion. It's been ordered and uh, it's going to be installed by my good pal Dave uh, and Dan at the car garage in Tunnel Marine. I'm obviously not installing it because I've got no effing idea what I'm doing. Now number two, the engine. I don't need any more power. I don't want any more power. Well, sure, yeah, I would like 500 horsepower, but this little 3.3 liter uh, six cylinder car. It was capable of 82 kilowatt when it left the factory, which is the same as my mum's Mazda 2. Uh, but a lot of horses have bolted since. Not that one though, that one just keeps leering at me. But with that said, unless I'm going up a very steep hill, I don't notice it. The car gets up to freeway speed okay. I'm not holding anybody up. I'm one of those rare, rare people that when a single lane highway opens up to a two lane highway briefly, uh, an overtaking zone, if you will, and that sign that says keep left unless overtaking, I actually do it. And here's the best part. I actually don't speed up either. I maintain speed or I even slow down because I'm checking my mirrors and I let other cars pass me because I don't want to hold anyone up. I want reliability starting the car, especially in the cold months. People are saying, yeah, we'll do a barra swap. Okay, barra swap's fine. You know, you pick up a cheap barra, five, 600 bucks, whatever, and then it all gets installed and then the transmission and then this and the engineering and then there's other emissions things you have to test now you have to pass. And, and seriously, when it's all in there and all the other bits and bobs, the mounts and the whatever that you have to get it all happening to make it all good, you're actually getting, because I, remember, I can't do any of this myself. So this is literally hand the car to someone and then pick it up and it's engineered. It's it's just perfect and ready to go. We're, we're around a 10,000 K mark, maybe even more. And I'm not talking turbo either, but I'm not ruling a barra swap out. I mean, I'll take an AU engine, I, I, any modern fuel injected engine I, I can, I could really enjoy. Should I get a 351 or a 302? Yes, yes, I definitely should if I planned on having this as a weekend car and I planned on taking it to shows, which I am, um, and I planned on selling it at some point and making uh, quite a sizable return on my investment. But that isn't my plan. This is going to be a workhorse. This is going to be driven almost every day. It has to start in the mornings without waking up the whole neighborhood. Uh, some sort of fuel uh, economy would be good. Although I never really look at the price of petrol when I fill up. I need petrol, I just fill it up. I can't change the price of the petrol at the station I'm at. And if I'm that worried about saving $1 or $2 or $3 over a, uh, an entire fill, all I could do is have one less schooner a month at the pub. 
and that would balance out to be about the same money. And of course, you could get an engine that's got its own set of problems, so better the devil I know. This is the original 41-year-old Crossflow. It's only got a hundred and, what is it now? 184,000 uh, kilometers on it. I gotta just keep thinking about the problem I wanna solve, and the problem I wanna solve is starting the car easily in cold weather. So we're looking at a Holly electronically uh, fuel-injected carburetor, two-barrel carburetor for, for this car. Um, it will then start almost like a normal car. Apparently, you're still gonna have to pump one, two, three times, maybe name them a sex tape, but then it'll start, it'll regulate the revs as required. I, it'll essentially just start like a modern car. And then currently, I have to leave the car running for three to five minutes until it's warm enough to drive up my driveway without it conking out. It'll take care of that problem too. So that's, that's, that's where I'm at with the engine, but I'm, I'm curious to see what you think. Again, I don't have deep pockets and the car is to be a daily used workhorse. I don't intend on selling it. Would I ever sell it? Yeah, maybe, you know, things change. Things change all the time. I, I wasn't planning on selling the Mustang. I was gonna pay it off and then slowly convert it into a track car. Uh, it's gonna demolish the damn thing. So things change. Then number three is the sound system. Again, it's it's only got the AM radio and the speakers are, are just shot to shit. As a short-term solution, Bluetooth speaker in the cubby hole on the passenger side. That would probably work out all right. You know, some, some double-sided tape, some Velcro, just plonk it in there and then I can actually use it in the house too when it's not in the car. I, I'm not sure if you can take Bluetooth calls too well with that sort of setup. Apparently it can be done, but I, I don't really want that. What I want is the normal looking facade, but behind that, I want a retro sound style sort of situation where hands-free phone calls, hands-free streaming music from my phone. It all looks original, uh, but then I want some stonking big power. You know, I, I don't really need subwoofers, but I, I do want at least two nice speakers in the front and at least two nice, slightly bigger speakers in the rear panels of, of the wagon area. And uh, and that ought to do it. So that's where I'm at, you know, a, a quick summary. I, I need to fix the steering. I, I want to be able to control the car better. I'd like to be able to start it easily in cold weather and not have it conk out at me uh, straight away. And I'd like some, some good tunes. Yeah.